No, I love it. And that you put it in the context of coming after the movie. We got all the things that you're talking about in the movie, and this is a continuation of that. And so what it sits well with me, this is one of my favorite episodes of the season. Now, I haven't watched the fir- I've only seen the first season of this show, and now I'm reviewing it, and I didn't watch it closely like I, I did in uh, for this episode, but this is one of my favorite episodes of the season. And why did it come first? Because it's one of the best, and I think that's you know that sits well with me. It's a story that I care about, and is it doesn't have Anakin, it doesn't have Obi Wan, it doesn't have Ahsoka, but it's got a character I love acting in a way that I love, and it it had the biggest part about this is the theme of leadership, and I think that's really important. It's something that really, aside from Princess Leia to this point has not really been touched on by the Star Wars universe and not as overt. Um, Or I'm sorry, much, it was much more overt in this episode than it was for Leia in the original trilogy. So I love this episode. I'm happy that they led off with it. Um, I think it's a continuation of the movie and I'm happy that they did it. As someone who's a big Ventress fan, what do you think of this portrayal of her? Because this is two beatdowns in our first two appearances. It's, it's classic Saturday morning cartoons. You know, I mean, Skeletor loses and He-Man wins, and that's kind of what we're used to. And I, I think that may have been the intent. I don't know that for sure, and I'm just speculating, but it's classic Saturday Saturday morning cartoons. It's Popeye, you know? I mean, Popeye always wins, and, and kind of does it with a wink and a, and a nod. But it's at some point, they got to have wins, right? I mean, they're going to win this war, eventually, right. come the third movie. So at some point, they got to build her up a little bit, or are they are they beating her down to keep her down? You know, I don't really know. I guess we'll know more as the series unfolds. It doesn't bother me yet. It could in the future. Maybe I'll come back and uh, and we'll think back to this episode and see how it changes the far that we go. But for right now, love it. All right, before we end this second episode of Star Wars in Review, I gotta ask you, buddy, what nerd stuff are you looking at? What's keeping you the engines going for you this week? So I'm also gonna put this on the table along with my Yoda leaping around battles. I enjoyed the Justice League movie, despite all its faults. So recently, you gave me a box of... Because I never read DC growing up as a kid. I was a really big X-Men guy. I had Wolverine, I have Wolverine 1 through 80 somewhere down here in the Camrose Studios. And then I was a big fan of Sam Keys the Max, which was an image comic. But I didn't read anything DC. So you gave me a bunch of your Justice League graphic novels. And I'm reading Identity Crisis right now where, uh, spoiler alerts for this as well, but the elongated man, who I was not familiar with and would have laughed at his name until I saw him in this book, kind of Mr. Fantastic, stretchy powers, his wife is murdered. And the heroes have to kind of unite to find out, and then other close relatives of the heroes are of the Justice League are being attacked. And I have zero clue who's going to be responsible or what's going on, but it is really, really interesting. It is a really fun read. I'm getting to learn a lot about different DC characters that I'm finding really interesting. And for me, as someone who grew up just reading Marvel things, we were always kind of told, we always kind of had this mindset that like, yeah, Batman's cool, but everything else about DC is just kind of lame and cheesy or whatever. And there are things that are kind of cheesy, but now as an adult, I kind of find comfort in some of that. Like, I kind of like some of that 1950s charm, you know, it... That Superman just stands for rights, and that Green Arrow wears a pointed hat and has a yellow goatee. You know, I don't want everyone in a black leather costume being slick and 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 smooth and all those type of things. So it, I, I just am having a really good time with it, and it makes me want to learn more about some of these DC guys that I neglected as a kid. You know, I, I'm excited that you are talking about that. That was written by Brad Meltzer, uh, one of my... One of the guys that I really, really like, he came out with a show on the History Channel called Decoded, where they go through and they investigate mysteries and those sort of things. And I've always liked him. And Identity Crisis is is a book that I really like. There are some critiques out there. You know, we'll see what happens when you when you read the whole thing in context. But it's something that I liked. I had fun with. It's uh, it's a good, you know, my experience with the Justice League for the most part is the the animated cartoon that came out in the 90s. Which, which I loved. I thought it was fantastic and fun. And that's most of where my knowledge of the Justice League comes from. So it's fun to see these books where you see so many other characters. 
And there are some really great concepts in there. I love the idea of Booster Gold. Like, why isn't Booster Gold a better or a bigger name? Why isn't he played by Job from Arrested Development? Exactly, exactly. Like, what a fun character concept that's really unique. You know, just kind of a bratty guy, but he's from the future and has all this technology. So he comes back in time to be a hero just because he knows what's going to happen. I think that's really fun. And they have a lot of really fun characters like that. They never get mainstream mention, you know, because it's always just Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, you know, maybe a little Flash and Green Lantern here and again. And in so, fairness, I think that's done by WB. You are what you promote, and Marvel does a much better job. I mean, for goodness sakes, we have a Guardians of the Galaxy movie yeah. where there's a talking raccoon in space. No one cared about Iron Man before Iron Man, and Marvel promotes everybody, sure. whereas DC well, just kind of insulates themselves. Isn't that the, the joke with those Marvel movies is that they based a cinematic universe on the leftovers that they weren't able to sell off to mm. other studios to make, so these were the the guys they could use but they they went and made good movies so then now they're everyone's favorite ones but no you know nobody was a massive captain america I love fan him. oh my god and, love captain america yeah but now and now he's you know one of the most popular and you get all these characters that y- you haven't really seen before that are getting the spotlight and if dc made better movies overall they'd get to as well i mean you know suicide squad other than harley quinn i wasn't too familiar with anyone but that's such an awful movie that you don't want to see them again mm. and you know, we have Shazam coming out, which I have to say sounds like a really stupid concept to me, but hopefully they pull it off because they need a win and I'd like to see some competition for Marvel just to keep things interesting. So hopefully they'll start getting some of these right and we can start seeing some of these fringe characters that have cool ideas behind them get a little bit more of the spotlight. My son is a massive Martian Manhunter fan out of nowhere. I don't know where that came from, but he he loves him. So, we're holding out hope that DC can last long enough in the movie game so that I can take him to see a Martian Manhunter movie. For me, I found a troubling piece of news this week. As you know, it, in the fall, I get very busy with my work schedule. I've got a lot of commitments, and one of the things that tends to suffer is my soccer watching. And I am a huge Madrid fan of Real Madrid. And because I am also a college football fan, I couldn't afford both ESPN and BN Sports, so I let BN Sports go, and I had ESPN, and I checked in on my beloved Los Blancos to find them in fourth place. Neitzel, what the hell is going on? People want to sell Ronaldo? I check out for half a season. All of a sudden, my Champions League victors... The greatest team on the face of the earth are in fourth goddamn place. Help me out. What is happening? Well, ba- basically, they went up against the MLS All-Stars, and they they knew they peaked. They got that, that shootout win in, in <laughs> Chicago at the All-Star game. That and was fun, by the way. That was fun. And, and they knew that they couldn't do any more than that, so it's just time to give up. I don't know, man. I I don't watch Spain very much for soccer. I watch a lot of England, and then I've been watching a lot of Bundesliga now that they have that on Fox. But it's it's shocking, and everyone's going to be fired and out because that's that's not a club where fourth place is anything. And I and I haven't looked lately, but I heard rumors they're crashing on a Champions League too, and might end up in Europa because they're going to crash out too early, which. Would be shocking as well, but if you win Europa, you get back in Champions League. You know, Jed Dawson is a friend of the show, and I kind of feel like this might be karma, because when United, his team was going through stuff, I wasted no opportunity to nitpick him about Europa, and it's in, it's in... It's up ahead, and I don't know how to feel about this. And you're going to have to answer to him when they're the ones that end up with Ronaldo... <laughs> at the, uh, at the end of good. the year before his eventual move to LAFC. Oh, but as a massive Arsenal fan, I am very excited to the prospect of us meeting in Europa for the next multiple years because that is also where we are going to be. And we are also selling our best player to Manchester United, maybe to you know tomorrow, maybe by the time this comes out, it's already happened. So... Yeah, fun times for us in soccer, but uh, the Chicago Fire re-signed Basti Schweinsteiger, and That's good, at least. we drafted well, and we may not have a com, but I think we're going to spend that a com money well, so that's where I'm going to put all my, my soccer pride into that Chicago Fire team, because uh, Arsenal's not going to get it done, and for you, it doesn't look like Real Madrid's going to get it done either. Well, with all that bad news, it's important to still focus on the good. We've made it through our second episode here 
Um, once again, on Twitter, reach us there at, at Kid Seriously. You can reach us by email at kidseriouslyradio at gmail.com or check us out on the World Wide Web at kidseriously.wordpress.com. We got a couple articles and reviews from Star Wars comics up there. Uh, the next episode, we'll be looking at all the latest Star Wars news, including reviewing episode two of The Clone Wars. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you'd enjoyed it. Uh, once again, that's Luke Neitzel. I'm Maya Madrid, and we are signing off for now. See ya. Thank you for listening to Kids Seriously. This episode was recorded and produced at Camro Studios. Visit our website at www.kidsseriously.wordpress.com or email us at kidsseriouslyradio at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at Kids Seriously. Until next time.